Hi there, welcome to this week's edition of the Heart of a Youth Leader podcast and videos on YouTube if you really want to see what I look like. Uh, these are short, sharp, weekly uh, inspirations to help you stay connected to your Heavenly Father as a youth leader. So many great podcasts out there and videos on YouTube that will help you in your ministry as a youth leader or as a youth minister but I realised there's just not that much it actually takes care of you uh, and we have got to be taking care of our own souls our own walk with our Heavenly Father if we're going to be good safe people for young people to follow uh, and so it's the heart of a youth leader because I want to encourage your heart uh, every week I keep them purposefully short hopefully no more than 10 minutes an episode uh, and the idea is to inspire you to then spend some time in the week ahead uh, just praying to God and asking him to speak a bit more into the situation. Hope you find it useful. Thanks for the feedback that you give if you do. Uh, if you like these episodes please follow them on your podcast provider or if you're on YouTube uh, subscribe and give us a thumbs up it always helps us to know that we should keep going with these things um, uh, and so uh, hope it's helpful today uh, I want to reflect on Psalm 9 uh, and it's all about our heart uh, it starts with I will give thanks to you Lord with all my heart I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. And, you know, the thing that struck me as I read these two verses was how often do we spend time giving thanks to God and how often do we tell others about what we're thankful for? And I was thinking about in our youth work, wouldn't it be great if every time we gathered together with young people, we had a moment to celebrate God's goodness? What's God done since we last met? Uh, or whether people know Jesus or not for themselves yet, there's still things we can help them to, to identify of things to thank, to be thankful for. And even when life's hard, it's looking for those moments to be grateful. Uh, I can remember some real wisdom from uh, a former church leader of mine uh, sharing that he was in some kind of uh, counselling pastoral role uh, for uh, a person who was really going through the mire, really struggling with, with a lot of difficult issues in her life uh, and was getting really grumpy and felt like uh, everything was too much and was against her. And he just said, write a list every day of at least 10 things that you're grateful for. Uh, and uh, and then he said, and if you can do more than 10, go for more than 10, but be, a spe be specific. So don't just thank you for my family, but thank you for my brother who did this or this characteristic of my brother. Uh, and and over the weeks of, of her doing this exercise, she started to feel uh, a sense of uh, being able to cope better with life and a bit more hope because she suddenly realised actually not everything's against her. Uh, and so what would it help in our, in, with our young people that we're going like, right, what have we got to thank God for? What have, what's been good this week? It may be little. It may be that the, 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 the test I had wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Or I, I, I had an unexpected conversation with someone that I didn't think would ever want to talk to me. Or it may be just thank you that the sun came out for half an hour this month or whatever. Uh, let's, let's, let's raise that expectation to be looking for what God's doing. Whenever we say, what's God been doing recently? I think we always think, mm, there's got to be a sign or a wonder, you know, something out of the extraordinary. Uh, and of course, that's wonderful when that happens. But for most of us, that is not happening every day. Although that's a, a question whether it should or not uh, is for an, perhaps another episode. Um, but, but, but we can be looking for what can I thank God for uh, and be specific uh, and give examples. And then the other part of verse one, I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. We need to tell each other of what God's doing. 
I caught up with a friend of mine who lives in Germany this week and he said to me, I said, Andy, what's God been saying to you this week? And it's like, wow, so good. But how rarely I get asked that question. And and because I got it's so rarely asked, you, it takes a moment to go, oh, yeah, well, what has God been saying to me? And, and then we then we were able to share together. But wouldn't it be wonderful if we just had that expectation that God is doing stuff in our lives? So let's let's just be ready to tell. And I wonder if too much of our, our teaching in our youth groups is more theoretical rather than uh, um, story, rather than testimony. Uh, and actually, yes, we need to teach, but we need to share our life experience with God. Because it's as we talk about how we've walked with God, how God's made a difference and an impact in our lives, that young people and other people start to go, oh, wow, I want that in my life. So I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. And it goes on, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. And you can see there's this progression for the psalmist. Uh, he starts with a place of, Lord, I'm just going to thank you. I'm going to say thank you for all that you've done. I'm going to be specific with all my heart. I'm going to list the things that I am grateful to you, God, for. And I'm going to tell of all the good things you've done. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to proclaim your wonderful uh, deeds, your wonderful tasks. I will be glad and rejoice in you because the thanksgiving and the proclamation leads to a place of uh, of 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 uh, happiness, of joyfulness, of being grateful and glad and rejoicing, which leads us to sing God's praises. And people say to me, Andy, young people don't like singing. They don't want to sing because it's too awkward. Uh, we've got to get over that because there's something special that happens when people worship together in song. Uh, and when young people come together and they don't mind and, and they're over that awkwardness, actually, they really go for it. I was, it reminds me of our um, base camp youth weekend away we had uh, earlier this year. We haven't been able to gather for so long because of the pandemic, but when we did, uh, and, the, and, and the band wasn't actually that great, but, but there was a real noise in worship because people just wanted to sing and they want to praise the name of the Most High. Uh, and so we need to try and work out how do we engage young people uh, with, that they can sing in a way that's not going to be awkward. Top tips for that uh, would be turn it up loud so that they don't feel like they're being heard. Don't have it too quiet. You can use videos or YouTube you know, lyric videos or whatever. You don't have to have someone playing it. But equally, if you have someone playing it, uh, people want to join in. Uh, and you just got to get over the awkwardness. Uh, and go for it. The message paraphrases these two verses by saying, I'm thanking you, God, from a full heart. Isn't that great? I'm thanking you, God, from a full heart. I'm writing the book on your wonders. I love that. Keeping a book of all the wonderful things that God's done in my life. I just think that's that's wonderful. And if you're a journaler, Maybe that's something you should be doing is writing the book of God's wonders in your life. Continues, I'm whistling, laughing and jumping for joy. I'm singing your song, Hi God. So there's the thing for this week. Let's be thankful from a full heart. Let's be remembering and telling of God's wonderful deeds. And let's whistle, laugh, jump for joy and sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Have a great week. See you next time. Go for it.